What's up everybody? Brother Christopher with the heads not the tails and perhaps this is one of my most important videos to let you know that the sword is coming. If you guys look around and see what's really going on this is not about the crown flu or you know I can't really say the name but this is not about that this is about an economic reset they are resetting the whole world right now into giving up cash accepting government as God and bringing in the mark of the beast they're using the excuse that cash is dirty and can, can, and can carry the virus all right, everybody, I just want to show you this clip here so there is no second guessing or questioning what I'm talking about. Electronic payments look more appealing as people fear cash could spread coronavirus. You see what I mean here? Perception of cash as a vehicle for coronavirus could change how consumers choose to pay in person. Look at this. See that microchip? They want that to be in your hand or in your forehead in the future. So, March 16th, 2020, you see that? They want to go cashless around here. They want that mark of the beast implemented. And we're not going to accept it. So just wanted to show you that clip there. And it's a lie. And you got to think with all the things that they've been implementing over the years. FEMA ships. In addition to large quantities of supplies, I've also directed FEMA to supply the following. Four large federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for New York. Eight large federal medical stations with 2,000 beds for California. And three large federal medical stations and four small federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for the state of Washington. FEMA camps, FEMA trains. Now take a close look at the writing on this train here. You see what I see? What you probably see is CN. But if you take that C and turn it right side up, you're gonna see that it says UN. As in the United Nations. This is all a part of everything here folks the end is near I thought I'd point that out to you now I don't know if you saw or remember but in one of my videos I was talking about one of my friends who passed away before he passed away him and his girlfriend were on a trip to California and they were stopped by trains when he told me that this train that was passing was driving real slow but he could see shackles on the insides of the carts and I asked him do they look like human shackles or animal shackles like maybe they were shackles like for cows or something he said no these were handcuffs all along the sides of the carts and I believe them you know god rest his soul but you know he did show me that years ago that was around 2011 when he showed me that so i just thought i'd share that with you too
Now I want you to watch this clip carefully here. You know, the first few carts of this train are, are the engine that, that pulls all this stuff. But look at the carts that follow the engine. You can see that they're like, almost like cages. I mean, thousands of people can be transported by these trains anywhere in the U.S. they want to go. Who knows, they might have uh, passages that go underneath the ocean and can take you to a whole other continent. You don't know what the government's been up to or the powerful, sick, evil elites of the world. You know, they, they did a lot with their money. They did a lot for the devil, anyway. Get ready, folks, because it's coming, and I'm here to warn everyone that the sword is coming. And if I don't warn you, the blood will be on my hands. Now, you could expect the internet to get shut off shortly, because they don't want the truth out there. They don't want anybody uh, dismayed, or they don't want anybody's attention on watchmen like myself or any of the other truther channels out there so they want to divert that attention to their narrative their agenda and I mean come on y'all it's coming to the point where it's gonna be accept the mark or die just like the Bible says, choose the mark or, or choose death. And I'm urging everybody to choose death. Fear not death. Fear not the one that has the power to kill your body. Fear the one that has the power to kill your body and to cast your soul into hell. Because that's what is about to happen. Stand strong, everyone.
We see all the stuff that's going on. We know that the 5G network is a network that is going to be used to track anybody, anywhere. Just like Trump said. It'll be on land, it'll be on sea, it'll be in the sky. They'll track you anywhere. And this 5G network is just a, a very powerful frequency that can reach the most remote parts of the world to track people down. Don't take part in this B system. Get your souls ready. Prepare to be a martyr for Jesus Christ. I love you all. I love all of you. And I'm praying for everybody. Please pray for me too. You know, it's scary y'all, but fear not. God is with us. Just don't, don't. Whatever you do, do not take that mark. I'm praying for you. Stand strong, don't faint. I love you. Remember you're the heads and not the tails. And if God can use me, he can use you too. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we're here in Madison, Georgia, looking for the famous FEMA coffins, CDC FEMA coffins. You can see they're stacked up everywhere. Come on, my windshield wipers. There it says private property. Just going to drive along here, show you how long these can actually go. Up to pile up about 15 high in each. I don't see any lids. Not too long ago, I talked with Dale Bohannon, whom I've known since I guess the mid 1980s. And he told me something very interesting that he found back in the fall of 2000 while he was on a business trip. Listen to this, folks. I was pulled to the side road, which was uh, uh, a new cut gravel dirt road in front of a business, a builder supply business, actually top-notch builder supply in Madison, Georgia. To my right, this was a, previously was a soybean field, um, and this little new cut road divided this field. And the right side of the road was filled with, uh, which I thought was portable toilets. To, I never looked at them that close. Same in color, maybe black, but which was an odd color. And I was sitting there going over my notes, and um, a van pulled alongside of me that turned out to be the property owner. And he greeted me, and he was by himself, and so we had a good little dialogue there. And I asked him about the, the field of black boxes, what, what were they, because uh, I'd never seen anything like that. And uh, and his statement was that if he told me, I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred at that time. He said there was 125,000 there, and they were stacked. Uh, he told me 15 high. I asked him uh, who owned them, and he stated that uh, the CDC owned them and that they were leasing the land, leasing his land for storage. And um, he um, said his brother uh, worked with the CDC in Atlanta and had been asked by the CDC to do a three-year extension to place 
temporary morgues all across the nation. So in January of this year, 2005, we decided to drive to beautiful Madison, Georgia and take a look for ourselves. It was on a Sunday and no one was around, with the exception of this one pickup truck that was coming out the narrow road that we were going in on next to this field. We flagged down the uh, pickup truck and it was providential that the driver of this pickup truck turned out to be the son of the man that owned this field. So naturally we started asking him questions. And he told us that not long ago there had been as many as 500,000 of these grave liners or disposable coffins. We asked him for permission if we could look around and he said yes. So we did. We're just getting a, an idea for the size of these boxes. What could these boxes be used for? Well, they're called casket liners. And that's an interesting term, isn't it? It's a casket liner. When I first heard the term casket liner, I thought perhaps a lining for a casket. But this is too big to be on the inside of a casket. So certainly this could be used as a casket. This is an inexpensive casket. And you can see the size here. There's lots of room. Uh, I think my friends here, we could all probably get inside and it might be a little cozy, but we'd fit just fine. Which tells me that these liners can be used for more than just one. And uh, one more time, what kind of liners are these? Casket liners. Um, cas these are casket liners. That's what the man said. That's yes. what the man told us. When you can still get Domino's fucking pizza over in New Jersey, mm -hmm. but you can't get a gun, guess what you got going, brother? Martial <laughs> law. Yeah. Dress well, it any way you it's want. It's very interesting to, t you know, some, something obviously has occurred with Trump because he's, he seemed to 180 all of a sudden, not just from the virus wasn't that bad to it is that bad to now all of a sudden, no, we're back in two weeks, Easter, it's all good. And while the everyone else is like, no, bro, it's not, you know, so it's, it's, it's very, very interesting to see the United States government dealing with a pandemic with kind of two narratives diametrically well, opposing I, each other. As, and, and just to point out real quick before you answer that, you know, I had mentioned Cuomo slipped up the other day and said in his press conference, you know, my daughter's really upset because she's stuck with me for months. Oh, it's not even slipping and, and up. Went, there it is. That's that there it is. Months. Just let the cat out of the bag. Pat, let me let me tell you right now that the, the reason you're seeing two stories right now is because everything's already been decided. All right. Oh, yeah. I can't tell you the mm. number of people that have already sent me their letters for paperwork for essential services. Once the military is fully in place, um, then you're going to see that essential services are going to be stripped back even further. But let me show you how much information is really being controlled. For, for instance, in New York right now, they've got makeshift morgues set up military style outside of hospitals. Obviously, this is not a headline. Why? because they're managing information. De Blasio, as much as I don't like him, why is he being the most honest? Because he knows he's going to hit, be hit first, and any way he wants to dress it, it's going to be full-on military in the streets martial law. For instance, one of the things that was trending today was by Jackie Chan. Why was that trending? Had nothing to do with Jackie Chan. It was a group of police officers trying to disband a group of five or more on New York City and being unable to do so. Well, that's going to change rather rapidly when it's either the National Guard or the Army. So how are they doing it slow style? And de Blasio... Well, we, yeah, I'm sorry. We've received information that the Marines have also already been deployed. Yeah, and, and, and you would be 100% right on that, and it's unfortunate. And, and, the specific, and the specific tag and caption was, my husband's leaving. He said it's going to be like Iraq, 12 to 14 hour, 16 hour shifts. Um, he'll be gone for months. And Marines, you know, they don't guard checkpoints. I mean, they do, but they're more for patrol... Uh, yeah. So well, urban, patrol, yeah. but at the same urban time, patrol, let's, yeah. let's talk about the, the synthesis of this in New York. They had cases that I confirmed all the way back in February in Niagara, in Buffalo, that they completely covered up. There's still unreported cases here in Otsego County where I live. All right. And why are they doing that? Well, first of all, with the selective testing that they started, remember those lawyers worked in the city. But instead of testing people around them in the city, what did they do? They tested their family first, knowing that they would come up positive and have a hot spot. 
New Rochelle is mm -hmm. about 15 miles away from every containment zone you need to landlock that place, a.k.a. the Cuomo Bridge, uh, the, uh, the Lincoln Tunnel, and the Washington Bridge. Now, that's also a great staging center for as you need to deploy troops down into the city before you lock it off and then afterwards. And then county by county, the infrastructure that you built will also take to the streets with, what, the sheriff's department and the state troopers, and it will be more manageable than the panic that's going to ensue in the city. Because right now, yeah. they're doing the best to not have prison riots at Rikers and other places. In fact, another thing that's not being reported, and you can watch it, uh, was a prison break in Washington State where the madness is going on, and 14 yeah. people jump in the fence. In fact, YouTube made that tweet unavailable to my audience yesterday. So they're already managing information. We yeah. have never seen the type of actual panic and chaos that's going to happen in this country. Disease or not, the wheels are in motion, man. Um, I, I will say it for the umpteenth time as we've been grinding out content this week, man. Look at how people are doing each other in stores over water and, and hand sanitizer while everybody's belly's still full and still living somewhat comfortably. That's going to be, you know, chipped away at very, very slowly but surely. And the architecture, like we've said, has been set up as far as the military presence. Imagine in a few weeks the social impact no checks coming in, nothing's open, you know what I mean? And if they keep hyperinflating the freaking economy, the dollars they do give us aren't going to be worth shit. It's just, I, I don't see it how, in any way, way, shape, or form, how this couldn't be. It's, you know, it'll get worse before it gets better, obviously, but how dark and bad it's going to get. This oh, is, go ahead, tells go ahead. me it's a war. Well, they're talking mm -hmm. about war. Yes. They're saying, yes. Rosie the River. Yes. All right, let's go back to what you said a couple months. If you watch those press conferences, it's not a couple months. You can, in fact, if you watch my videos, I put up the graphic. They say two, four, six, maybe nine months. Now, maybe not the entire country is going to be under lock for nine months, but you have to understand when they've put out projections, right, of 40 to 70 percent of the population uh, becoming infected, right? And well, they'll never test that many, but that infected. Well, you're talking about what? You're talking about way more people in New York that live on top of one another being infected. Forget 40 to 70 percent. You're talking probably, you know, 60 to 90 percent of those people are going to become infected. You're going to overrun the systems there. They're already building hospitals out of Stony Brook, Westchester. Those are SUNY dorms, okay, and campuses. The Javits Center, and uh, I forget what the fourth one is right now. Uh, in fact, they did one of the press conferences from the Javits Center. They've already, those are going to take three weeks alone to retrofit. So you, that should let you know this isn't over in April. And de Blasio is saying this is going to bleed into the rest of the country. The paperwork I'm getting are from railway people that are going to be going throughout the country. All right. Mm. Um, the other thing is, and w while we talk about the military, I think this is really important. Even in my little area, about 10 miles away by the Baseball Hall of Fame where there ain't many people. In March, they were doing Apache Helicopter National Guard drills. They were doing them a week and a half before over here in L.A. And if you want to get a really good look at what they're actually doing, is they're going through rural-type residential neighborhoods. I'll turn that off. And pulling over what? American citizens taking their weapons, as you can see here, Okay, you're going to see the weapons strip. And then the really bad boys, those aren't Arabs firing guns at the military. And there they are lined up. You'll see the drop zones later on into like Costco and Walmart, like parking lots. This happened in North Carolina. So to say the military isn't prepared, unfortunately, to take on the American people, they've been doing these type of drills for years. And I think the right type of quote-unquote pandemic and the fact that they're fresh on these drills where they're firing uh, automatic weapons in parking lots, well, who knows where it goes from here. I pray uh, and hope that it doesn't get as dark as that, but, I mean, what happens when they say you have to take a vaccine? And that's, that's what, what I'm saying, pushing. man. That's a huge red line for a lot of people. And going back to what you just said about the military, Pat, I think sent me this, you know, trains and uh, San Diego. I mean, I understand Hummers if you're going to do this. I'm not saying I, I understand that it's okay, but Bradley tanks? Like, why are we needing... Yeah, Bradley, Bradley fighting vehicles, uh, some M1 Abrams, you know, there's, there's scenes of, of trains moving all over the place. Now, some military will <clears throat> have told me, said, hey, you know, we were planning 
uh, maneuvers in Europe and war games in Europe, and so they're bringing the stuff back home. But there's, you know, also, of course, the Germans are moving a lot of equipment around, things like that. But uh, it seems like a, a great way to explain it, in my mind. You know what I mean? So... That's, well, think about this, Pat. That, that Remember me. the big announcement that we were going to get out? We were finally going to get some combat troops out of Afghanistan right before this, this hit the fan. Mm. You have right. to wonder right. if those people coming home are going to be redeployed to the American streets. I yeah. wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, and, and one, one gentleman who's a f uh, friend of mine sent me a message on Facebook when he saw one of the videos that I sent him of military equipment being moved around and, and also a line of Hummers, and you've seen it, the line of Hummers going up I-55 in Illinois towards Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. He sent me this message, and that's all he'd say, and he said, this is all I can say is, massive military operation won't take long. And that, you know, I go, whoa, bro, <laughs> bro, uh, on domestic soil, mm, yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, well, that's the thing. How many of these rights are we going to get back? And, for instance, I don't know if you guys have seen the videos in Belgium of the drones that are now populating yes. the streets with infrared cameras and microphones telling people to go. That could never happen in America except for it already has in California and is being yes. deployed there as Downtown well. LA. Do you think those have, do you think those have, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, they probably obviously have, cam obviously have cameras. Do you think there's some facial recognition going on with some of that software and those things? I mean, facial I've recognition great, can run either I've got live a great or. I shoot those down, though. I hope they come here. Yeah. What would you say, Jason? I said that can run either live or after the fact. Remember, facial recognition is kind of just based on imagery anyway. So whether it's real time or not, it, it certainly could be yeah. used for that after the fact. Um, how high def are those cameras? I mean, it's I ran a bar. Uh, before I was doing this again full time, and we had some pretty great cameras for a few hundred bucks. So uh, I would imagine they're pretty decent. Um, the other thing about this is why aren't we talking about real solutions? You know, we're talking about the hydrochloricin and the chloricin, but why aren't we, for instance, everybody's talking about this um, nationalization. Uh, okay, and taking over already built factories, but then they want to retrofit these other places for hospitals. Why didn't we uh, immediately uh, get the National Guard into motion to retrofit all the factories that are closed in America? You go to Michigan alone, and you probably have a, a good working place where you can start uh, manufacturing what? Not only tests, but masks and even possibly ventilators, which seems to be the big thing uh, that's you know, not there in Italy, not there in Spain for these people dying on the Short ground. Supply, yeah. And yet we're not doing that. And we're also not saying, let's catch it early and deploy something like vitamin C intravenous, intravenously that's already been peer-reviewed. We got somebody in New York featuring this, and I'm hoping this goes as viral as the hydrochloroquine. Uh, but there's yeah. already been peer-reviewed studies in February on this, and if it's caught early, these people do a lot better than uh, the people that don't get it. And obviously, you know, Pat, the better your immune system is, the less likely you're going to be infected by any type of virus. Sure, sure. And, you know, with this, having, having had uh, our scientist friend on, George Pardos, we talked initially early on in this whole thing about the Neanderthal gene being something that the more you had of it, the more resilient you were going to be against this particular virus. And, and he walked away from that a little bit, but we came back to it because the, the statistics in Germany show that for a huge number of people that have been infected in Germany, um, they have a low mortality rate, which says that they have a very high Neanderthal gene over there. And so it's very interesting, right? That, that, uh, and, and he also leaned towards it being created in a lab because of that. 